Hi everyone, welcome back to the Tekimaki channel. Before we start the video, don't forget to subscribe and also click on the notification buttons to receive notifications whenever I publish new videos. If you like the content, don't forget to share that with your colleagues and friends so you can help me spread this free content. Alright, so today we are going to work in the implementation of our repository generic class. This repository generic class is going to allow us data access and also data updates in our RavenDB database. This is the database of our menu service. In the series, we are creating another taken system. In this video, I'll also switch my IDE, as you can see here on the screen. I'm going to start using the Visual Studio 2019. In the previous videos, as you could see, I was using the Visual Studio Code. The Visual Studio Code is a great tool, but for me, Visual Studio 2019 gives me more productivity. Although everything that I'm going to show in this video can be done in Visual Studio Code or in any other IDE of your preference. Visual Studio 2019 can be also downloaded for Mac and for Windows. We have for Windows a free edition that is called Community Edition. Ok, so now let's jump into coding. Two videos from now, we created the first API of our service. It is a GET API that actually retrieves the product based on a product ID that is informed. In the previous video, we have created the RavenDB context. The RavenDB context is basically the way that we use to access the document store of RavenDB, which is basically what allow us to make queries, to update documents and to insert documents in RavenDB database. Today, we are going to connect these two parts. We are going to not use any more fake data. We are going to retrieve the items from the database. So the first action that we need to do is create the iRepository interface. Let's do it. Here I'm going to create a public interface i repository. This public interface will be a generic interface. So the concrete class that will implement this interface here, when it is instantiated, it will receive the data type that it needs to work on. So all the operations of this class are going to work with a data type that is specified when the instance of this concrete class is created. So it's basically injected inside of this class and available only when there is an instance of it. This is the beauty of this implementation because it can be generic and we only specify what is the data model when we are basically instantiating the class. So let's see the implementation of three methods on this repository. The get all that gets all the elements from the database, the get that basically gets one element based on the ID, and the insert or update, the one that receives a document and then inserts if no ID is specified on the object that is being received, or updates if there is an ID specified and this ID exists in the document catalog. So let's implement. Okay, so now that we understand the concept of each of the methods, let's start to create the first one that is the get. So public t get. So basically we are going to receive an ID and return whatever, generically speaking, model we need to return on this get. The second method is going to be get all. But for the get all, there is one important thing that we need to take into consideration. We need to protect our database from actually having to capture and return all the data that we have available. Because we don't know, as soon as the system starts to scale and receive a lot of products and be really, really heavily used, we don't want our API to be slow. We don't want our system as a whole to be slow. So we need to protect and we need to limit the quantity of data that the consumers are going to be able to retrieve at once. 
And why? Because everything, uh, if you think about web pages, if you think about mobile apps, everything has a limit in terms of size. So if you want to display products, we always have some sort of paging. Even if we are talking about infinite scrolling, when we scroll, we are only returning a fixed number of items. And whenever we scroll even more, then we are going to go back to the API again and retrieve more. So the idea here is that we want to protect our get all call, right? And we want to make sure that we return pages. So for this, let's specify here that we want to first receive the page size. And secondly, we want to receive the page number. So we just return one page of a fixed size. And then the consumer can define what is the size. And then basically can define also the page number, which of these pages from the whole content that we have in the database the user wants to consume at the moment. One thing to be very clear and to make sure in this case is that we also need to define what is the limit of a page size because the user may actually specify uh, that he wants a page size with uh, 1000 documents right, in one call. So in this case, we also will specify this type of limitation. We are not going to specify this in the repository, but we are going to specify later in our controller, okay? So moving forward here, we are going to create the last API. The last API is going to be the one that insert or update the content inside of our RavenDB database. So the content that will be sent right uh, to this method is a T as well. It's the generic model. And then basically we can call it object, right? Or element, we can call it element. That's even better. Okay, so now we have the basic repository. So then we are able now to create one concrete implementation is still generic that will basically execute all these actions in a RavenDB database. So let's do it. All right, another important thing before we go straight to the concrete implementation. The good thing about creating interfaces in this case is that in the future, we may want to switch this database solution to, for example, MongoDB or to Cosmos DB. And creating these interfaces helps us to do this without actually impacting the other layers of our system. So we can just replace the RavenDB by a Cosmos DB repository implementation, and then it's just a matter of changing the startup.cs and it's going to be available for the other layers of our solution. All right, so let's just go ahead for the code and then implement the class RavenDB repository. And this RavenDB repository is going to be a generic class as well. That's going to inform T. And then we are going to implement I repository. By implementing I repository, it means that here in the Visual Studio, we have some uh, support. So it says implement interface. This is going to create the basic structure of the methods that we need to implement if we want to implement this interface. So implement the interface, all the methods are going to be created here empty, of course. They are throwing system not implemented exception. And here we are going to start our code. So one thing that we need to do before we really start the implementation is to create a constructor. So I'll write CTOR, right? And then basically I have a constructor. And in the constructor, I'm going to receive the injection of I RavenDB context. So we have the context that we need in order to access the store and open a session because we need to open a RavenDB session. And this RavenDB session is going to allow us to either query content or store content. Okay. So in this case, let's create here a field. So I'm going to create a private field that is called content. So read only I RavenDB context, context over here. And then inside of this context, I'm going to, in the constructor, I'm going to set the context that arrives from the dependence injection, I'm going to set on this private field. Inside of the get implementation, this is the first moment that we are going to start a session in our database. To start a session in RavenDB, and this is actually very common to almost any database implementation, we need to open a session. This session needs to start and finish in the context of this method, because if we don't 
close appropriately the session, we're going to have multiple sessions open in the database. And this is a problem if you think about performance because it's going to generate a leak in your system, okay? So in order to avoid this, let's use a keyword that is very important, that is using. Using wraps the initialization and finalization of objects that are disposable, objects that need to be closed. In this case, actually, we need to close it because we need to close the session, okay? So I'm going to use using over here. And uh, using, so let me define a variable here. So using var session equals context dot store dot open session. So this open is basically a RavenDB session for you. Okay, so uh, this may seem weird, right, for the ones that are not used to the new C Sharp 8 syntax. Uh, in C Sharp 8, you basically don't need to put like parentheses in the using, right, and then open and close brackets over here. You don't need to do this anymore in C Sharp 8. If you are, of course, specifying that this using is valid during the whole method execution, then all you need to do is put using and then put uh, just like a, in, in a single line, you can specify this using and then it's going to understand that the open session is going to be closed as soon as we end the method. Okay, so that's a very interesting feature that makes your code much more readable. Okay, so let's continue. Then with the session, I'm going to basically get the content that I'm trying to get based on the ID. So let's do it, session dot load, and then I'm going to pass like, because load is also generic. So that's also interesting, right? Because we are using a generic implementation because the load is generic and we are inside of a class that is a generic class. So I'm going to call load and pass the ID. Then I'm going to return this information to the element variable. And this element variable is going to be returned in my method. Fine, perfect. So then we have created three lines of a very simple implementation of a way to retrieve data by ID from the database. So let's continue for the get all. For the get all, this is also very simple. We need to do the same thing like using var session equals underscore context store open session. And then here, RavenDB has a great support for link queue. Link queue is actually very good. It allows you to create very simple syntaxes to deal with collections. It actually allows you to filter, it allows you to select items, it allows you to format and do a lot of great stuff uh, just by using a very fluent type of implementation. So let's use the link queue here in order to get our data using a paging mechanism. So here I'm going to do the following. Var elements are going to be session dot query and t which is the generic uh, data type and here we need to import the link queue so let's import the link queue over here let's first just move this class to the appropriate file so i'm going to move this type to ravendb repository.cs which is going to be a new file so let's go to the ravendb repository over here and here i'm going to use link queue system dot link queue all right, so in the system.link queue, I'm going to do the following query.skip because I'm basically going to skip a page, right? So I'm going to basically skip the page number. So I'm going to skip all the pages up until the last one because the last one is the one that I want to retrieve, right? So I'm going to put minus one and multiply that number by the size of the pages. So page size multiply it by page number minus one because I want to actually skip all the pages up until the latest one. And then I'm going to take. So take page size. All right, so this is what I need to do. Let's see what's going on over here. So query actually says that it is a method. Oh, sorry. Let me do this. It's a method. All right, so I'm query, then I'm skipping, and then I'm taking the data. So look, this is very straightforward to read 
as a developer. When you read, for example, link queue, it's very semantic because it's saying, hey, I'm skipping all of these pages and I'm taking the last page with this page size. And the good thing about RavenDB is that if you send this command in, for example, let's say that RavenDB doesn't have these documents because let's say that you're looking for, in terms of size, you're looking for 10 elements and then you're looking for page four. But in terms of RavenDB database, there are only at the moment 10 documents there. What RavenDB does is that if it doesn't find the data in the range that you're looking for, it's going to return empty. So there is not going to generate an exception or a problem or anything. It's just not going to return any data. So that's actually a very graceful way to deal with paging because it simplifies a lot the process. If you just receive like nothing, it means that there is no data actually to consume up to this page, okay? So uh, in this case, let's just return. So we have the elements, let's return the elements, and I think we're good. Let's take a look of what's the point here. Oh, all right. It is expecting basically not to return T, but to return I numerable of T. This is the point where, that we actually miss it. Let's go back to the I repository here. And then in the get all, we need to return an I numerable of this generic type. And uh, what is an I numerable? I numerable is a, an interface that is implemented by many of the collections that we have in C Sharp. So if we use I numerable, that's a very generic way to describe that this is going to be a collection of data. So let's do this. I numerable and then basically I numerable of T. Let's see here because it's asking me to import probably system.collection. Let's see. Yes, using system.collections.generic. Cool. So here we have the I repository. We need to go back to the RavenDB repository and implement appropriately the return over here. I enumerable of T. Cool. Great. So let's see now if that has worked. Oh, we, I also need to in, in, use the same uh, I enumerable. And that's, that's it. Now let's go to the last one, that is the insert or update. Another cool thing of RavenDB is that it also allows us to use the same method, which is called store, to either insert data when this data does not have any ID, or update the data in case this ID already exists in the catalog of documents. So that makes it very easy for us to implement a very generic insert or update. Okay, so let's do the same. So using var session equals context store open session, right? And then let's do the following. Let's uh, basically store this element. So session dot store and element. And finally, we do session dot save changes. This means that we are committing these changes in the database. So we store just basically put that in a kind of a staging area, right? It's waiting to be persisted. And then we call save changes and done. It is actually saved in the catalog of RavenDB. All right. So we have created the whole RavenDB repository implementation. So now let's make it available in the dependency injection so we can use it on the controller. Okay. All right, but let's hold a little bit and continue our work in the next video where we are going to finish and actually consume the generic repository inside the API of the product service. Okay, so I see you in the next video.